Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through Project Lead the Way IED Activity 5.7 and we're about halfway through this assignment. We are talking in this particular video about solving the first bullet point in this problem dealing with traffic cone. So let's read through quickly and see if we can glean some information from the paragraph above. The question that we have is that first bullet point, what's the minimum cone weight that will resist an applied three pound horizontal force? What we know first is that it's manufactured according to the dimensions on the right and it has to resist a three pound horizontal force. That's gonna be pretty important. We also need to know where the force is applied. In this case, it tells us it's applied at the top edge of the cone, okay? It says it can be applied in any horizontal direction. We're gonna assume that the thing doesn't slide, that it just tips over instead. And again, the question is, what is the minimum cone weight that will resist an applied three pound horizontal force? And we're saying that minimum word because, you know, the thing could weigh a million pounds. If I could find a way to make it out of like, I don't know, plutonium or something ridiculously dense, you know, I can make it weigh more than I need to. I'm curious what the minimum is, okay? So let's look at this problem and let's take a, a few, um, you know, use our moments stuff that we've been doing so far to investigate a little bit further. First of all, here's what we know. we got a three pound force. We know that when we have a three pound horizontal force, it will cause the object to tip over. So let's go ahead and define this green dot in the bottom right corner as my tipping edge, my tipping point in this particular view. So I know that if I have a horizontal force, I know that the distance, if we're doing moments, the force and the distance are perpendicular to each other. So a horizontal force needs a vertical distance. The vertical distance in this case, 28 inches, right? Three pounds applied at a vertical distance of 28 inches will create a clockwise moment in this particular case. Now, what's gonna counteract that? Well, the weight of the object, right? So we have the weight of the cone, which is, we're going to say is centered here, probably towards the bottom a little bit, not halfway up quite, but it's going to pull straight down. We don't know how strong it is, so let's just call it W pounds. We're going to solve for that here in just a second. W pound force, it's pulling downward. Now we need to know if we have a vertical force, we need a horizontal distance. What is the horizontal distance between that red line, that force that's being applied, and the green dot? Well, we go to our top view from the sketch and we see that we have a 14 inch distance all the way across. So if it's 14 all the way across, that tells us it's probably seven inches to the green dot. So we have W pounds applied at a distance of seven inches and that's gonna create a counterclockwise moment. That's gonna create counterclockwise rotation if that thing was spinning in the air around the green dot. Let's put it all together, okay? Here's what we know. Three pounds applied at 28 inches, W pounds applied at seven inches, those two create moments, one is clockwise and one is counterclockwise, and they will counteract each other. In each case, it's force times distance. So three pounds times 28 inches is equal to W pounds times seven inches, a little bit of algebra, and we find out that W must be equal to 12 pounds. The traffic cone has to weigh a minimum of 12 pounds in order to keep from tipping over. Hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, We'll talk about the next bullet point, which is what is the minimum density of material needed to achieve that 12-pound weight? If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in class.